Hello YouTube, it's Silver Age Dave and I am here in the comic room. Uh, today is Thursday, the 8th of July, 2020. Uh, I am just going through a few things that I've picked up recently and uh, thought I'd share them. I had a little bit of free time at lunch, lots of work to do. So this, this will probably be a short video. Uh, but I thought I'd see who's out there, who's uh, who's bored or looking for a lunchtime friend. So so, uh, um, so anyway, with no further ado, uh, I have been active and busy. I've been uh, buying a few things. Hey, we've got Funk Comics in here, Grandmaster in here, Mastodon in here. Thank you guys for jumping in so quickly. That's beautiful. Uh, really appreciate it. You guys... Uh, um, spending a little time with me. So um, I've been busy. I've been buying some things here and there. Uh, as sometimes happens, uh, I've got different things on my uh, on my radar. And, uh, and when I see them come up, I'll watch them. Sometimes I'm very patient. Sometimes I'll have an item in my eBay watch list for years, uh, as was the case with, uh, with this, which was my video yesterday. This is the Challengers of the Unknown. Uh, this was the prototype uh, for um, for the Fantastic Four. Uh, and this was done during the time Jack Kirby worked for DC. This was done in 1958. He went back to Marvel, and lo and behold, uh, what was it, maybe 1961, we have the Fantastic Four with Stan Lee. So uh, this book, this exact copy was on my radar for probably two years. And I'm, I generally like to stay very, very patient. And um, and eventually things find their, I call it things find their way home, you know, okay, to, to where they are happiest, which is here in the comic room with Silver. So uh, let me say a couple of those. And I'm going to do a, do a, show you guys a couple of books. So we have uh, Felix in here. Good morning, sir. How are you? Slim Comics. Nice to see you. Rob Boswell. Always a pleasure, my friend. We've got Ken Lovett. Nice to see you. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. We'll see how many lonely people there are out in comic book YouTube land. We'll see who joins us this beautiful afternoon. Uh, the first book was uh, was a pickup. We had an estate sale uh, not far from my office, so I took a uh, you know a little lunch break. This was about a week or two ago. And uh, he actually bought a lot of Christmas stuff and some gardening stuff from them. I love summer garage sale Christmas finds. I, I actually bought some Christmas stuff today uh, at a, uh, a church garage sale. Love doing that. But this particular state sale a week or two ago happened to have this. So it's my Alan Garrett special. Uh, for anyone that, that's familiar with AFTA Comics, Alan Garrett, he used to buy these things for his sister, right? And uh, anytime I see the romance comics now, if I can get them affordably, uh, this one came in this three ring binder pocket for two bucks. It's in pretty nice shape. Okay, could benefit from a press, but I don't know what the uh, you know what the market is really on romance comics. I I might have overpaid it two bucks, uh, but that's okay. It's in pretty nice condition, and uh, it's a you know going back to old time DC. And what, what's interesting on these here, uh, let's, as long as I see Bubs is in here, so let's, um, let's open this up. And uh, this is old time Bubs where he'd say, oh, look at that pink blanket. Isn't that a beautiful pink blanket right there? They did a great job uh, with the artwork on that beautiful blanket. So there you go. There's one for you, Bubs. Um, Oh man, Mastodon saw a big stack of those. You know, if they're affordable for a buck or so, I always like adding them in. The art is beautiful. Uh, sometimes you you can't you don't really know um, who did the art on these things. Sometimes they're uncredited. Um, you know, and and this one I don't see anything in uh, in the way of who did the art or stories, but. Uh, it usually, if you have Metarog around, usually he could tell you, uh, but usually it's high quality. I mean, look at that. That's beautiful stuff in there. So, um, so I'm happy to have that and, uh, you know, it's a nice addition. So Mastodon saw a stack of those. 
I think comics are comics. It's art, it's stories, and uh, some of them are pretty pretty hokey. Uh, and, and Young Love has an is interesting history. Uh, Young Love dates back from the, uh, I think, the late 40s or 50s. And they had, I want to say they had like six volumes of Young Love. And uh, they would do, I think they would do like a little bit, and then they do a new volume a little bit. And then eventually, uh, Young Love, when it got its own dedicated series, um, National or DC, started with I th like number 40 or something like that. So number 82 is actually going to be like the 42nd issue of the newer series of it. And there were multiple volumes before that. So little comic history that's, you know, who cares, but neat stuff anyway. So um, who else we have in here? I see Bill, Comic Mag Musings. Nice to see you. Thank you so much. Uh, Felix says the same happened to me. I was very patient waiting for the right time to get X-Men number three. And finally, it's mine. Now I've completed the entire run. Congratulations, Felix. I have, uh, I don't even know if we can see it, um, right there somewhere. I have my blob. Oh, I don't even know how to point now. Up there somewhere is is uh, X-Men number three. But completing that run is a big, big deal. Congratulations. And uh, But let's get to the, the, the more exciting stuff. Sorry, Alan Garrett. Uh, but I'm going to move on to the more exciting stuff from this particular haul. And this was a uh, selection of Spider-Man books that were, um, were grouped together. And I bought that. This is probably more than a month that's gone by uh, since I bought this. So my memory lasts me about a half a day. I remember yesterday a little bit, but if I have a conversation yesterday, usually today is going to be a little tricky remembering it. So I don't remember what the cover photo was. I know this was a steal, uh, in my opinion, but uh, I don't remember what I paid for it. I think it was like 15 bucks for the whole group, and that might have been shipped. Uh, the cover photo they used on this uh, was, I believe, this book, which is the official Marvel Index number one, uh, which is you know probably a dollar book, really. Uh, but what I, I did is I flipped that uh, the other way, and it's one of my favorite uh, covers. It's the uh, Amazing Fantasy 15 runner-up. Um, uh, Kirby and Ditko both did a, uh, a copy, and uh, of course Stan went with the iconic Amazing Fantasy 15. This was the runner-up, and I think it's awesome. So whenever I see these, uh, Marvel Index number ones. I always want to buy them just because I think it's cool to have the back of it. Uh, so we had that. It had official Marvel Index number two was in here. Um, hey, backseat driver was out for a run. Now I'm jealous, dude. All I want to do is go for a run and I can't seem to get out. I'm very, very busy right now. Uh, we have Eduardo in here. Nice to see you. Do you have any Golden Age Batman? Yes, I do uh, have a little bit. Not a lot. Not a deep collection. I wish I did. But um, but I, I have have a few nice things. Uh, but not for today. It'll be maybe another day. Uh, this particular group, I think there were six books in it. Uh, it had the Spidey Super Stories number one, which I am always going to buy Spidey Super Stories. When I see these things affordably, then I am always going to buy these and uh, and jump on them because I just think they're great. Um, Electric Company. Hey, I think I see Bad Avenger in here and I see Metarog in here. I see Grandmaster Stash. So nice to see you guys. Uh, there is plenty of old dudes in here that remember growing up with the Electric Company. And uh, uh, you know, I, if memory serves me, that was an after school. Uh, I think you'd get home and you'd watch that a little bit. Uh, they had this graded as a fine, very fine. Looks really nice, but I will always buy these. If I end up someday with a hundred of them, I will say, wish I found more of those things. Always like buying these. 
And uh, yeah, very funny, Rob. I like that. If it wasn't for all that running. Hey, you know, there are some funny signs. Um, coincidentally, when you run marathons, there's always someone with a sign 0.2 miles. So marathon is 26.2 miles. So there's always someone with a sign at the 0.2 mile mark right after the start that says only 26 miles to go. You're almost there. And that is a funny one. And one of my other favorite signs, it cracks me up when I see him. Every marathon I've ever run has this sign. Uh, it, it says uh, marathon. If it was easy, they'd call it your mother. Isn't that terrible? That is terrible. So it's a, it's one of those funny things, though, when you're running and you're at 20 miles and you're, you know, going loopy a little bit, then, uh, then uh, you know, you kind of laugh a little. So that was a funny one, uh, funny sign I've seen. And they have others, but I won't bore you. So that, that's pretty funny. Uh, Paulo, how are you, my friend? Nice to see you in here. And uh, Vincenzo C., always a pleasure to see you. Travis Wolf. I got to learn to be more patient buying books I want. Hard to do sometimes. Oh, you betcha, Travis. It is the hardest thing, but it's a long game. Uh, I think that's the mistake a lot of young collectors is uh, are going to make is they run forward. They've got all this energy, and uh, they buy a bunch of things, and uh, it gets addictive when things are coming in quickly. You want them to continue coming in quickly, and that becomes expensive and uh, you end up buying a lot of things that maybe aren't the things you want. And uh, then when you find the things you want, maybe the funds aren't there. So patience, patience, patience. That is the big, big thing. Uh, so as long as we have all these old dudes in here with knowledge, now I come to three Spider-Man books I am not familiar with. Um, like I said, I bought this whole lot really because of the, uh, the Spidey Super Stories uh, number one, and it was so cheap, I thought, what the heck, but this one is really interesting to me, you take it out of the plastic, this is uh, 1982 History of Spider-Man, uh, it's Fantico's Chronicles series, number five, uh, was originally a dollar and fifty cents, it's got a really, really cool back cover on it that I love, let me zoom in on this artwork, I don't know who did the artwork. Maybe it says somewhere, but but I don't know. I'm just getting it opened up now. Uh, this, there's the artist for the front. I assume that's an artist signature uh, of some sort. But um, this is kind of a cool little, little magazine. I haven't read it yet. Uh, it says it has articles, interviews, complete checklist, illustrations, satire, and history. And if you are a Spider-Man fan, big time Spider-Man fan, um, this is the magazine that just keeps giving. Uh, they have some price guides in here. Uh, there's a, uh, uh, an article by Jerry Conway, Life Hanging by a Thread, Wolfman and Pollard uh, article. Uh, oh, here's a cool, what if J. Jonah Jameson had been beaten, bitten by the radioactive spider? Okay, so that's one of the what ifs. Uh, and, and kind of funny, the, the stuff you find, uh, Spider-Man's First Love, this is a weird little little cartoon in here. Uh, they do have a, um, a really neat centerfold on it. So I don't, again, I, I was unfamiliar with this, or if I was familiar, I'd long since forgotten it. So uh, this is the kind of thing when, when winter rolls around, and, uh, and I've got, oh, okay. Hey, thanks, Metarog. So there's an X-Men, a Daredevil, and an Avengers also uh, to this series, which is which is kind of neat. It says uh, this is issue number five, so maybe there's, there's some other cool stuff they do. Uh, and they have a Spider-Man checklist, which I found to be really cool. Uh, it's got Amazing Fantasy 15 with the details and the synopsis on it. And then they go through ASM. All the way through issue 232, I believe, where they're they're giving descriptions of of uh, everything that's happening in there. They have the annuals laid out: Spectacular Spider-Man one and two, the giant size one to six. Um, they have uh, Peter Parker Spectacular Spider-Man, 
and um and and all that good stuff spider-man versus the fly artwork on there by gilbert just lots of lots of neat stuff so for you know whatever i paid for it i'm really really happy to have that thanks roger for the um thanks for the the information on that uh let's see what did i miss uh the jack kirby fanzines absolutely great stuff uh we've got mastodon with some bucks to spend so he's looking at captain midnight which is great uh let's see what else we have in here hopefully i'm not missing anyone uh i am gonna try something metarog told me i can give someone a wrench Ed moderator we'll see if we can give him a wrench and then if there's something he has dad he's in blue because metarog seems to know a lot of stuff which is great dorkeries are in here nice to see a dorkeries um this second magazine that was in this lot this one's a little beat up uh not in great condition but it is uh spider-man magazine let me pull this out of here uh, maybe some of you are familiar. This was $1.95. This is issue number one, March of 1994. Yes, Metarog has the power, as always. Uh, consider Metarog my better half in uh, comic community land. Silver Age Dave has Mrs. Silver Age Dave in real life land, but then in YouTube land, we're going to have Metarog as my better half. So um, this magazine, it's got some cards in it, uh, which are, are kind of cool. We've got a cool Venom here, Spider-Man, Vulture, and Dr. Octopus. Uh, this one, the cover isn't on there great, so I'm going to be kind of gentle. There's a Bub's Wolverine for everyone, Cyclops, Gambit, Juggernaut. Uh, that, that looks like more part of a video game right there, part of an ad. And uh, there's some, uh, looks like some trivia. Here are some jokes. Uh, what do you get if you cross Spidey with a fluffy white dessert topping? Webbed cream. Yes. It's worth the price of admission, guys. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you got a maze in here. Looks like more of a kid-based thing. Um, what is that all about? We've got a Galactus appearance in here. I'm kind of speechless as I'm looking through this. I don't think I've seen this before, uh, but it's a uh, just a neat magazine. I saw Dr. Doom in there. It's a little write-in thing. Anyway, that was included in the lot. Sorry, a little slow down there. And the last one that was in there that maybe some of you are familiar with. This is a 1986 Spider-Man file. Comic file magazine spotlight on Spider-Man. And uh, again, it's just a cool... Uh, there's some artwork. There's a couple articles in here. Introduction, early years history. Uh, the Ramitas. A talk with spider writers. And the spider and I. So... Um, what year is this? 1986. So pretty early uh, uh, black suit stuff, you know, first couple years for black suit. But it goes through, it tells all about it. There's our AF-15 cover, the Lee Ditko years. And this one's in really nice shape. A little bit of color rub on the, on the cover of it. But uh, for someone wanting to do some catch-up work, hey, look at that. Where have we seen that before? Um, so that's that same uh, centerfold off of the Chronicles, which was from 1982. So that's a little reuse, which is neat. So let me put that down. And let's see what else is in here. And then I got just a couple more things. Like I said, it's probably a short one today, guys. Uh, everyone's been really kind a um, lot of black suit you know it shows us how how big a deal that was there's our sm280 cover
Hey, congratulations, Slap, uh, Slapjacks. Just one more issue to go for a complete run. That is a, a real, real uh, big deal. Anyway, I don't have a lot to describe here because I've never seen this one before. Uh, it was kind of a cool lot for 15 bucks, and, uh, and just always love adding this, this weird stuff I haven't seen before. Um, let me stack this stuff on the side, and I'm going to show one last thing. This one's not a big surprise. I am a creature of habit, and I do things. Uh, I did end up picking up another one of these. Uh, which you guys have seen before. This one's in pretty nice condition. And it was an interesting auction. This was probably a couple months ago. I, I just haven't been making a lot of videos. And um, it was one person that had two of these. Hey, thanks, Musings. Yeah, like button. If you like it, go ahead and hit that like button. I appreciate that. Um, one seller had two of these, and they had them both listed on eBay, auctions, bang, bang, back to back. Uh, there were, like I say, there were two, and this is the one I liked more, but it was the second auction. So I went in on the first auction. There was, I think, only a few of us in there at the last couple of seconds, and I bumped that price up as high as I thought I wanted to go, and I lost that first uh, that first auction, and I thought, I wonder if now that person's appeased, or maybe... Because that one went for a high price. It scared some people off. Maybe I could get the other one real cheap, which had a low price. And sure enough, uh, I ended up picking this one up super cheap. I, I don't actually remember the price I paid. I think it has 32 stamps in it, which is fine. Um, you know, it has two copies here. Uh, and, um, you know, so there's a couple extra ones in here. Uh, it had this, uh, this number five. Hulk, which uh, messed up a lot of people. It's not, yeah, showing off the stamp books again. Um, so this number five wasn't actually a stamp from the book. It was, I it, uh, correct me, Metarog, if I'm if I'm wrong or if my memory's bad, I, but I think it was just an example stamp of what was going to be coming out. I don't remember uh, the detail, but I think this was readily, readily available, and some people thought it was a stamp, uh, but it just was not. Uh, stamp number five is Dracula. So they cut this out to put it in the book, and it didn't match. So they just uh, they just left it in there as a uh, as an extra. And so that was a cool pickup recently. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of other things. Uh, I've been to Walmart a couple times. I had this laying out. I've got to get this filed. Um, this is a five pack or four pack or three pack. I don't know how many are in here. Three pack that I picked up and I, I've always been a big um, uh, New Mutants fan from the day it came out in, uh, you know, the, in the graphic novel form, I was buying them. And, um, and so uh, I saw this at Walmart and I thought, Oh, I'll just, I'll buy one of those, put it in the, in the uh, New Mutant thing. But I don't know if I'm supposed to open these. Someone uh, in the community buys these and opens them so you know what's inside them but i don't know if it's always the same books inside or if it's different books inside but um i don't even know if you're supposed to open them probably what do you think i should do guys should i open it see what's in there i don't know if there's anything good i'll just leave it maybe i don't know if any of us cares all that much about seeing what's in there um oh and i also bought i saw this at uh, at Walmart, I thought it was pretty cool with a little labyrinth or maze or something in there. So um, so you know, I picked that up and um, haven't read it, but it looks cool. So that's on the list of things to do. And uh, you guys want to see a uh, open it? They say okay. Well, heck, let's open it. We'll open it. And then uh, I had talked yesterday or the day before, one of those two days, I happened to be in Fremont, Ohio. I guess you open, you slice the back. Maybe there's a protective board. Let me see. Yep, that's what I'll do. We'll open that right up, guys. Let's see what's in there. Uh, I happened to be in Fremont, Ohio, Rupp's Comics, one of the greatest comic book stores in the world. 
Um, and I've been buying books there a while. Not a regular. It's like 45 minutes away from me. Uh, but I know the owner, Chris, uh, through a, a family member. And, uh, and he happened to be there yesterday. I'm actually going to be making a video. Uh, some of you might remember my One Stop Comics video in Chicago that I did. Well, Chris, I, I reached out to him and said, Chris, I'd love to highlight your store. He has one million comics just in his basement. Um, so, um, so he always takes very, 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 very good care of me. And I'm going to do a video on his whole operation at some point. And uh, I think you guys will get a kick out of it. And Alex Comic Quarter, if he ever gets to town, I think we're going to have to go to Rupp's Comics because I think you will love it. It, it is an amazing place. So uh, let's see what we've got. So we've got the New Mutants number one in here. Uh, and it says 119. So this is a variant edition. Okay, so would that make it a ninth? cover copy or ninth printing i don't know how we would actually term that but it's uh it's a you know they they have at least nine covers for new mutants so i'm actually happy to have that that's a nice one uh let's see and then um oh okay well this one I'm, is kind of cool we've got secret wars number one and this is you know what correct me on this guys Correct me on this. So I'm looking at this, um, and I was thinking it was a ninth printing. It's a first printing ninth cover. Isn't that how it works? I don't know if I can zoom in on that. I think that's what that means when, uh, when you see them that way. And then the Secret Wars, this has... Um, let me see what the oh it's on the front here. This has one seven one. So does that mean a seventh printing first variant? Maybe someone can uh, nine covers. Can't they get it right the first time? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So let's see if I missed anyone here. I have Samuel David. Thank you, Samuel Grotto. Nice to see you in here. Potentially there's other people I'm missing. I'm so sorry if I'm missing anyone. Uh, I got kind of uh, on a, uh, uh, a sidetrack here. Nike Jam is in here. Oi with all the variants. Yeah, that's the whole world of comics right now. Uh, but that is a pretty cool looking one. Kind of happy with. So we've got that. And then the last one, we have a Marvel Knights. Uh, there's the little code on there. So we've got a 1-2. And this is Marvel Knights number 1. And uh, so a couple of things to add to the, to the collection. So glad we opened that up. Now we see what's in there. If I see the New Mutants one, now I will know what's in there. Oh, I don't know if I did a uh, Copa warning. So let's see. We'll do the... the uh, you must be as tall as this sign to attack the city or enter the comic room. This is for grown-up people. All right. So, hey, Comico Dino, nice to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. So we've got that. And, uh, hey, does everyone know Sunday, Metarog is doing a show on uh, Treasury Comics? I just happened to be organizing Treasury Comics, and sadly, uh, Mrs. Silrage Dave is going to be out of town. So at 3.15, when that show's happening, I'm not, Roger, available uh, to be on it, which is uh, dreadful. I wish I could be part of that show, uh, but I'll certainly try to do a shout-out on it. But I have so many of these Treasuries. I was actually going through and organizing a few. And I thought, if it's okay, I'll show off just a couple that I doubt anyone has. If you guys want to see them, uh, I will show them off. Uh, I'm going to show this one off anyway. This one is a uh, Whitman Walt Disney Presents Jungle Book, okay, which a lot of people don't realize Walt Disney had some of these. 
So we've got that one. Kind of nice. Whitman. Beautiful. Uh, and then I will show... I had one or two I wanted to show. This one, I would guess... Uh, I think Lawrence is going to be, hey, XL State, nice to see you. Such a big deal. Thank you for uh, stopping in. Really appreciate you. Love the auctions you guys do uh, and all your um, contributions to the community. XL State's been at this a long, long time. Um, really appreciate you. Send me all your treasures. I'll make sure to show them. Yeah. So this is one that I'm pretty proud of. That's the House of Mystery. Uh, this is C23, which if anyone's ever tried to organize treasuries, DC is fairly simple to organize. They had uh, two versions. They had an F version and they had a C version. And it tends to be fairly numeric, which is really, really makes life easy. Now... When you go to Marvel, it becomes a nightmare because they have like eight different series of treasury comics. And if you're trying to organize them, you almost have to go by date to, uh, to get them organized. So that's the House of Mystery. Not a lot of, you don't see that one a whole heck of a lot. Uh, and the other one that I will show that you don't see much of is uh, C32, which is Ghosts, which is a really, really neat book. Okay, and um, maybe I'll, you guys want to see the inside of a couple of these? I could do that. Um, famous first editions and limited collector's editions. Yep. So um, they also had... Uh, speaking of Marvel, they had the Treasury Editions, they had uh, Treasury Specials, they had Movie Editions, which I happen to have the, uh, the box right here, but there's like Buck Rogers, okay, we're going with some black covers, but to, to follow along and, you know, find these things in a price guide is almost a nightmare for the Marvel, um, so... Let me see here. Those are great. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, they are really, really nice copies, which is um, pretty unheard of. And, um, and it, so I'm happy to have these. Let me see if I get this one out of here. And this is my tape block. Uh, I used to use a piece of um, a uh, like an old cover, and I'd put tape on it. And now... Uh, I've gotten addicted to using a tape block. This is basically a box of scotch tape, an empty one. And I just started putting tape on it. And what happens is like the rubber band balls you can make. So uh, I just keep that here. And it's really heavy. It's amazing. It's all tape. And uh, whenever you have that spare tape laying around uh, and you're like, oh, I think I can pull it out of there fast enough. Don't do it. Take the tape off. Stick it on the tape block. And, uh, and do it the right way. Because... You're just risking stuff. So seriously clean copies. Yes, they are. Thank you so much. I, I really, again, happy to have them. Uh, yeah, there's the live stream show. for That's not Shameless Metarog. Um, uh, he does, Roger does so much for the community. And uh, so this is, I'm going to try to keep this super clean. Uh, this is the back which some of you might remember uh, a couple of years ago. Let me see where that thing is. I don't know where it is. Uh, a couple, oh, here it is. A couple of years ago, I put one of these together, which was an absolute nightmare. Silver suffering, so you don't have to. This was uh, the back. Let me find it. See, now we're, I was going to do a short live stream, and now it's going longer. But I don't know if anyone will have one of these on your show, Roger. So you guys can talk about it and tell people silver saved us a lot of headache. Um, basically, it's the back of this. Okay. So what DC did is they created these things and they said, hey, kids, start cutting that out. And you can, you know, build a cool thing. 
And uh, I'll tell you what, that cool thing was a nightmare. It took me a couple hours to do this and someone had started it. So that's what you end up with. And my goal in life is to do all of them someday, but uh, you have to find a really beat up copy of these where the back is in good shape so you can put together the little uh, diorama. All right, so anyway, this is the Ghosts Special, and, um, and it's got that uh, tabletop diorama on the back. Let me see here. I don't want to really wreck this thing. There's a famous, ha famous haunted houses where it tells about real life haunted houses. Okay. And with these, what was cool is you get multiple stories in here. As a kid, you get a comic book that's almost bigger than you. And, um, you know, the, the price on them was, um, was kind of a deal breaker sometimes. You know, a family be like, oh, do I spend you know, 25 cents or do I spend uh, a buck? Well, most of the time they'd spend the, the, you know, the 25 cents. So you got a maze in there, which I'm proud to say is unfilled out. And then uh, there's your table of contents in the front. Um, and I'm, I'm going to close this bag up because I'm just scared that I'm going to put uh, big creases in it. It has a few creases, but for the most part, it's in, um, it's in really, really nice shape. So um, there we go. So yeah, pretty happy with it. And, uh, oh man, anyone that puts up with bubs, they have my sympathies. No. So, um, that's it guys. I am not going to show any more of these treasuries because I am sure Roger and the gang are going to, going to do a great job showing those and talking about the history of these things and uh, it's going to be an incredible video, which I, again, I won't be able to be part of, but I'll be watching that on the Rewind. Such a fascinating time uh, to collect comics and uh, such, a, such a cool part of, uh, of comic history. So that's it. This video has gone 37 minutes, which makes it a short live stream or a long regular video. Uh, I really, really appreciate you guys. And uh, oh, not near mint. You were almost just in time. You're catching the end, my friend. But uh, lots of cool, varied stuff. Just wanted to, uh, you know, chat with a few people today. I started making a just a canned video. And then I thought, oh, I better go live. And, and maybe there's some lonely people out there. So Comic Book G-Spot is in here. Nice to see you. Yep, that one. Just love it. And um, I, again... Get outside, go for a run. I'm hoping if I get my work done today, I'm going to go for a long, long run tonight. I'd like to do 20 miles. I was hoping to do it yesterday. Didn't work out for me, so today's the day. Um, guys, make life awesome. Smile a lot. Be everyone's friend. It'll come back to you. That's karma. Silver Age Dave is out. Ah, Roman Curtis, I just saw you. Nice to see you, buddy. I'm coming to Detroit soon. I'm going to reach out to you, and I want to get together and hunt some comics. I'm coming to Detroit. Silver Edge Dave is out. <laughs>